in this video, we're gonna be putting Luminar and Lightroom head to head to see which one is a better fit for you. And to be fair, I'm gonna be editing the exact same photo with the exact same edits and see which one has the better outcome. All that coming up. So let's just start over here in Luminar. And this is the photo that we're gonna be editing, a very nice waterfall photo from Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Just a pristine location, but I wanna put these head to head. So one of the things that I always start with is the preset section. And I don't think presets are cheating or anything like that. I just think they're a great starting point for your photo. Obviously with this one, Forest Stream is probably what I'm gonna go with, but you can always scroll through these and see which one fits your color palette the best. Now, I think when you click on them, it can be a little bit surprising, but one of the things you can do is click and drag this preset in and out and see how much you actually want to add to that. I'm gonna land it about 37. Now, once I have that intact, I'm gonna go over here to edit and I can start fine tuning this preset and the photo to get it exactly where I want it to be. So the first thing that I'm gonna go to is just the enhance AI section. This is gonna do a lot of different things like increase clarity, contrast. It's going to separate my highlights and my shadows for more contrast, but I just wanna increase that a little bit because I'm gonna do all that fine tuning with clarity and contrast in just a second. Now, I think when I'm using something like this, I always want to just go to my basic develop options first. And with the exposure, it's pretty much set exactly where I want it to be, but contrast is something that I wanna play around with here. I'm gonna increase that just a little bit, also increase my highlights and decrease my shadows to increase that contrast in the photo. Next, I'm gonna go down here to my color. Now for color, this is overall color. Everything you want in the photo is going to be affected by this. It's not picking out particular colors in your photo. So for this and, and for a lot of yellows and oranges, I like to increase vibrance first because it does a little bit more of a subtle job and then just a tap of saturation into that as well. Other than that, for this photo, it's pretty much exactly where I want it to be. Now, Structure AI is another one that I'm going to deal with, but I'm actually going to decrease the structure on this because it's so foggy and misty, and I'm gonna get to fog and mist and adding that effect to this in just a second, but it's so foggy and misty, especially in the background back here, that I want to complement that. So I'm just gonna click and drag the structure down. See if I go all the way down, it kind of just makes it really hazy, almost like a painting. I'm just gonna decrease that just a little bit to increase that fog look color for me. Next, I'm gonna go down to color, and these colors are gonna be these localized colors, each individual color in the scene. So when I look at these, I'm gonna skip the saturation and vibrance section, and I'm gonna go down to HSL. HSL stands for your hue, saturation, and luminance of each one of these colors. I'll show you how to use that. Basically what I'm looking for, and I think hue on this is, is pretty spot on where it needs to be. I'm gonna go down to saturation and I'm going to find all the colors that are in this photo and I'm gonna play around with their saturation. So red, I'm gonna boost up a little bit. Orange, I'll boost. Yellow, I'll boost and green, I will also boost a little bit. So now we have all these colors boosted just a little bit with the saturation. Now, to be sure I'm getting all of this exactly where I want it to be, I also want to make the exact same adjustments in colors with the luminance as well and affect how those look. So I'm gonna remember red, orange, yellow, green, and I'm going to go to luminance, and I'm just going to deal with those. So I'm going to deal with the luminance of the reds, I'm gonna increase that some, luminance of the orange, I'm gonna look at how that affects the photo, increase that, greens and yellows, also increase those just a little bit. Let's pause right here to see what this looks like before and after from where we are right now. So here's the before on the left, and as I slide that over, you can see how much color, pop, and atmosphere that we've added to this photo. So I'm gonna go back to the normal view. I'm gonna decrease my colors right here, and then I'm going to go down here to the atmosphere effect. Now I talked about the fog decreasing the structure to bring in more of that fog look, since there was fog and mist in the area. Now is where I'm going to increase the amount of fog that I want in this photo. Now fog, if I pull it all the way up, obviously looks ridiculous, but I do that to see how much depth I want in the fog. So the fog really comes in just a little bit on these front rocks, but really I wanna keep it into the back of the photo. I'll show you how to fine tune that even more in just a second. So I'm gonna have the amount dragged down just to where you can barely see this effect come in, maybe somewhere around like 10. 
and that looks pretty good. Now, since there is fog, I kind of want to complement that in the trees as well. So I'm going to go to mystical and kind of increase that just a little bit. Now, here's where a lot of this masking and localizing comes in and the power of Illuminar. So when I'm looking at masking, I want this effect just in certain parts of the photo. Cause if I pull it all the way up, it looks ridiculous. You know, this is not a good photo where I want it to be. But if I come over here to masking and click on brush, now I have a brush tool that I can actually paint this effect in exactly where I want it to be, which is going to be back in these trees back here. Now it's still a little bit too much of that effect. So I'm gonna come over here to adjustment and pull down the amount of that and just increase that just to where I want it in the background. I'm also going to do that with glow. I'm gonna increase that amount, go to masking, brush, paint that in just to these back trees back here, maybe even over into that yellow tree on the right side, kind of that glow. And I'm gonna go back to adjustments and pull that amount down to a realistic look somewhere about there. Let's look at this now that we've added those localized adjustments in here. So here's the before look and here is the after. If I put it just on those trees, you can see how much more of an effect and pop of color we have back there in those trees. The last thing I'm gonna do here is just go to my dodge and burn. So dodge and burn is just lightening and darkening certain parts of the photo so that you see and look at exactly where I want you to look in the photo. So I'm gonna keep it on lighten first and I'm just going to paint into the brightest part of this waterfall right here. And I'm going to drop the amount down just to where it still looks realistic, but your eye is always drawn to the brightest part of the photo. So that's where I want you looking in this shot. So we've lightened it up a lot. Next, I'm gonna to go to darken and I'm going to do the darken just right next to that waterfall outflow right here, maybe even on the corners down here of the photo as well, kind of make my own little vignette in this also. So that looks pretty good. I might even paint in the side of that rock right there where we have it. So let's look at the full before and after here before we go into Lightroom. So here's the before and here is the after. Now in just a second, I'm gonna to get to the Lightroom edits and see how these two pair up and compare with one another. But if you don't have Luminar and you're looking to get it, I'm not sponsored by Luminar, but I do have an affiliate link that's going to help the channel out to keep making videos that are gonna help you improve your photography. If you click on that below, it's gonna give you a special deal for Luminar. All right, let's look at Lightroom and see how it pairs up. So just to show you, I'm just gonna hit apply here and it's actually going to pull this applied photo over into Lightroom so we can actually compare those later. But this is the raw file that I'm going to be editing in Lightroom. So when I bring that up, I have similar options here of what I can do. Luckily, I don't have to do any um, adjustment on dust spots or anything like that. So I'm going to increase my contrast a little bit in this increase my highlights, decrease my shadows, increase my whites, decrease my blacks. Now, if you remember, this is very similar to what we were doing in Luminar when we were first getting started. We're dealing with global adjustments first and then dialing it back down to local adjustments. Clarity, if you remember, the structure option in Luminar is the same thing as clarity in Lightroom. So I'm going to actually decrease my clarity on this to pair what I did with structure just a little bit. And then also I said increase vibrance before saturation. So increase vibrance more then a little pop of saturation in there as well. Next, I'm going to go down here to colors. Now colors, the new update in Lightroom is a little bit different. So they used to have the HSL sliders like Luminar does, but now they've actually updated to a tool that I honestly think is better than the HSL sliders. This is the color mixer. And all you do is click on this little color dropper. We come over into the photo, click on whatever we want to adjust and that is going to be my greens, increase the saturation and increase the luminance. Color dropper again, come over to orange, increase the saturation and increase the luminance of that. It's a little bit too much saturation, pull that off just a bit. Color dropper again, click on the reds, increase the saturations, too much there, and increase the luminance on those. Lastly, I'm gonna come down here to these greens, these really bright neon greens, and I'm going to increase saturation and increase 
the luminance on those as well. So that's about where I want it to be. Decrease my color mixer here and keep going. Now the key thing about the color mixer is that it selects out the color palettes that you've chosen and you can always go back to those and further adjust them rather than picking out the little color dropper going in and constantly trying to pick the same one. I think that's a really cool feature. Now here's one thing that Lightroom has that Luminar doesn't, and that is the calibration section and the blue primary saturation slider. For some reason or not, it always makes my photos look a little bit better if I add a little bit of that pop in there. Now, if you remember in Luminar, we did a lot of local adjustments to add the fog in. It looks a little bit different in Lightroom, but the effects can be the same. So what I'm gonna go into here is my masking tool and I'm going to just select out a brush. Now, the good thing about this is I can select out a brush, paint it in, and do all of my edits in just that selection, whereas in Luminar, I had to make a lot of different selections and adjustments, but the benefit of that is you kind of get to see what that adjustment looks like before you actually make it, whereas in Lightroom, you're kind of picking and guessing. So I'm just gonna paint into the same section here that we were dealing with with Luminar and kind of like that, maybe over here a little bit. Remember we got into the rocks just slightly with that fog and haziness. So I'm gonna scroll down here to what we want to see, and that's going to be my hazy slider. So I'm gonna increase the haze in that. As you see, increase the haze just a little bit to make that fog kind of pop. And I'm going to decrease my clarity, and I'm going to also decrease my contrast back here just a little bit. Now, I think what I can see in this is that in this photo versus the Luminar one, this one is a little bit darker in the foreground. One of the things that I can do is select this plus icon right here and paint in a new brush section to kind of brighten up the corners down here just a little bit down in the bottom section, even in these rocks down here. I think is a little bit too dark as well. So having this selected, I'm just gonna scroll up and increase that exposure just a little bit, somewhere right there. So that's the full edited version. I think Luminar takes a little bit longer, but I honestly think that it looks a little bit better. Let's see what you think in the final results. So here are the two photos side by side. On the left, you have the Luminar version, and on the right, you have the Lightroom version. If I scroll in and zoom in basically into this back section that I think is really important here, you can see in the Luminar version, we have a little bit more of a hazy, foggy look to that. And I think that's due to the extra added features that Luminar has. There's a little bit too much saturation in that, and we can always adjust that in Lightroom, not a big deal. But I think in just a quick edit, uh, Luminar to me looks a little bit more realistic and a little bit more foggy. The colors don't seem as intense here. Now, down in the water, let's just see the detail down here that both have. I think they look really similar. The Lightroom version is a little bit more blue than I would like, but again, I can go in and change that. One of the things that I saw a difference in is kind of this rock right here and some of these greens because the Lightroom version to me actually looks a little bit better for those and the Luminar version doesn't have as much of a pop to it. Whether that's good or bad, it's just kind of dependent on your preferences. Now, the other rock I think looks really similar side by side, but there are also benefits and drawbacks. To me, I prefer the Luminar version just because it has more of that natural haze and mist and glow into the atmosphere for what I was trying to get in the photo. So that's side by side. You pick which one is best for you. Let me know in the comments section which one you like to use for your fall photography or your landscape photography. And remember that affiliate link down below that helps out the channel a lot with a kickback is below if you want to check out Luminar a little bit more. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.